Hi, I'd like to take a few minutes to show you the uh, latest project I've been working on. As you can tell, there's quite a bit of smoke around the workbench, and that's the project. Uh, I've worked with uh, animation for quite a few years, doing things with motion and sound and light, but never with smoke, because I never had a good smoke generator that would create a, uh, a decent amount of smoke. I think we're doing that right here. Uh, and would last quite a long time and be inexpensive to, uh, to operate and to build. I'm going to shut these down because it's a little noisy and a little smoky, a little bit dense. Shut that one off. Okay, all of this came about because e-cigarettes, uh, a relatively new way of delivering nicotine to people, uh, came on the market. This is a, a simple, inexpensive e-cigarette that I bought on eBay and typically it has a couple of parts. In the bottom is a battery. If I uh, take that out, this is a 3.7 lithium, a 3.7 volt lithium battery that fits in there. That connects to the bottom of the e-cigarette, usually through a small microcontroller with a push button. So if you push the button, the battery delivers power to a little heating element. Uh, this part of the e-cigarette is the heating element uh, a little bit of wick material that picks up the, the uh, smoke fluid, they call it juice, delivers it to that heating element. And of course, if you draw on that, you're pulling air through it, you're going to pull that, uh, uh, that smoke vapor, actually, uh, into your mouth and into your, your lungs. Uh, I experimented with a lot of different methods of working with this. The first thing that I did was to attach this uh, mouthpiece up to a vacuum pump. Uh, the problem with using a vacuum pump, it did work, it pulled the smoke through rather nicely, is the, the uh, vapor that came off of here, the smoke if you will, condensed inside of the pump and eventually gummed things up quite a bit and it started spitting out condensed fluid, it was kind of gross. So I, instead of uh, using a vacuum pump, which again would pull the smoke through it, I decided to pressurize the part down here and blow the smoke out the top just by using a simple pump uh, that generated as uh, not a very significant but a little bit of an airflow. Okay, now in order to build this thing, uh, I started by tearing these apart and uh, and pulling out the heating element. That got a little bit expensive because you had to buy the whole thing, the battery and all. And I discovered there was a gentleman on eBay that sold in a little pack of five uh, just the heating elements. And this is one of them. It has uh, just a couple of components. The main thing is a bit of wick right here and right here that uh, soaks up the, uh, the smoke fluid, they call it juice, and brings it to the heating element, which is right about here on this little device. And there's a hole that goes straight through. The hole goes in the bottom and comes out the top. And of course, when you draw on it, it's going to pull air through there, pick up the vapor, the smoke, whatever you want to call it, and deliver that to you. Uh, an important part of this is there's an insulator that insulates this part in the center of the base of the smoke unit from the rest of it. Those are the two connections for power to the heating element. Uh, we need to solder a wire on here and a wire on here in order to deliver electricity to that heating element. Fortunately, these are pretty easy to solder. Uh, I would recommend if you're going to be doing that that you use uh, thin in the neighborhood of, of 28 gauge, maybe 30 gauge stranded wire. Good source of that is an old printer cable, and you can find these laying around a lot of people's basements. This is a Centronics printer cable. Actually, this one might be a serial cable. Doesn't matter, but it's uh, it's about 10 feet long, and it's got inside of it 25 conductors of stranded wire. And if you strip off the insulation, you wind up with something like this and you can actually pull, there's a nice piece of wire that I pulled out of that, and if we strip the ends off of this, got a little wire stripper here, uh, tin those ends with a little bit of solder, and I've got a soldering iron here that uh, I'm running at about 525 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's a hot iron, And I find that if I take that heating element and hold it with a hemostat, 
give me a little bit of a handle. I can tin that as well and connect the wire to it. Uh, make sure when you're soldering this that you don't get any solder on the threads of the heating element. And make sure that the solder doesn't extend beyond the edge of those threads, otherwise it will be difficult to get in. And then when time comes to solder to this bottom part, looks like I didn't get a very good joint there on the top one. Make sure that the solder doesn't plug up the hole in the center of the uh, the smoke unit obviously will plug up the uh, the air passage and won't let air go through there. Let me see if I can do this better this time. Okay, we've got our two wires soldered onto there that we're going to run out of the uh, the pill bottle in a few minutes in order to supply power uh, to that heating element. Hemostat's nice too because that thing gets pretty hot and it's a lot easier to handle it when you've got the uh, pair of pliers holding it in place. Okay, that's all you really need to do with the heating element. The uh, the pill bottle itself, to get that ready, you need to cut it in half. And I found the easiest way to cut these in half is just take a little razor saw like this and mark it carefully, nice circle around there, cut it in half, and what you wind up with are two pieces. Looks something like this when you're done. And you need to drill three holes in that. You drill a 17 64ths inch hole in the bottom. That 17 64ths is a good diameter for getting those threads to go into the, uh, the hole in this part of the plastic bottle. In addition, I like to put an eighth inch hole in this section. That's where the wires are going to go through, these wires here. And I put a 3 16ths hole on the side. And that's going to be for a piece of brass tubing that we're going to connect up to our pump so that we can pump air through there. So once you get this thing cut up, you've got pieces that look like this. This piece here, the bottom, actually becomes the top. And what we're going to do with that is put the heating element through that hole, bring this up, and I have a pair of pliers. I want to gently push and twist that heating element into that hole so that it goes squarely in the bottom. Put a little more pressure on that. There we go. Is to get the threads to start and you want to draw it down and you want to compress the little uh, white translucent o-ring so that when you put the, uh, the juice, the fluid, if you will, into there, it will not leak down. Okay, we got that part done. And we've got the heating element uh, in the, uh, what used to be the bottom of the pill bottle. And what we're going to wind up doing is feeding the wires from that uh, heating element through the smaller of the two holes that we made in what used to be the top of the pill bottle. Let's see if I can get this one to go through. And these two are going to match up like this. So you've got the, the old top that has the heating element in, excuse me, the old bottom that has the heating element at the top. The chamber that's going to get the air blown into it at the bottom. And I connect the two of those at least temporarily just with a piece of electrical tape. If I put the electrical tape around here, that's more than enough to uh, hold back the pressure that you're going to generate in that bottom chamber and take a, a second uh, cap for one of these pill bottles put it through there and another hole that you need to drill is in that uh, the second cap that I have for the uh, the top of the whole unit that's going to go in like this so we wind up with a chamber down here that's going to be pressurized we've got wires that come out the side that are going to go to power to uh, heat up the heating element and we've got a point or a hole up here at the top where air is going to be uh, expelled along with the smoke. Got a piece of brass tubing here that's going to go in the top 
and that's where the smoke will come out. Now the last thing that we have to do, of course, is this has to be sealed up. I just use a little bit of hot melt glue, leave some slack on that wire, and if I push some hot melt glue through that hole and then add a little bit on the outside, again we're working with pretty low pressure air, it's not a big deal to get that air tight. Okay, while that's uh, the, the hot melt is cooling, let's talk about pumps for a minute. Uh, I've identified a couple of different pumps that work pretty well. This is my favorite. You can get these on Amazon delivered for about six or eight bucks. It's a very small electric motor with an air uh, pump unit on top of it. It'll work with 3.7 volts just like the, uh, the heating element and it puts the air out the top of course. There's another one that I've had some success with. This is a smaller uh, pump. I've got it on this little example here. Let me pull it off for a minute. This pump is, is physically much tinier, as you can see. The problem with it is the little uh, uh, connection on the top that goes to the air hose is a lot smaller than this one. You may have difficulty finding uh, plastic tubing that's going to go onto there, a rubber tubing. And it's also a lot noisier. So this is my, my preferred unit. What you're going to do with that is get a piece of uh, aquarium, tu aquarium tubing and that's going to go to the top of that pump. If you find that it's a little bit loose, I just wrap a piece of wire around the tubing, put it on, and then twist that wire tight to act as something of a clamp. And then that's going to go in to the, uh, the brass fitting that we have there. And with a little bit of luck, we should be able to have a, a functional unit just by adding a uh, couple connectors to the bottom of this to hook it up to 3.7 volts. This is a finished unit that I was using for demonstrations earlier. Again, the, the pump connects to the brass here. It's got the exhaust at the top here. There's just a little bit of the, uh, the juice in there. And if I connect this one up to the brass fitting, and connect both of these. I've got a little Y connector here so I can connect the motor and the uh, heating element and take it. This is a 3.7 volt uh, cell phone battery. You can probably hear the motor and once that heating element heats up just a little bit you'll see it's putting out uh, quite a bit of vapor. Uh, Two other things that I'd like to talk about. The first one is the juice, the, the smoke liquid, the vapor liquid. You can buy it on eBay. You can probably buy it in the local uh, vapor shop. These are the first two containers that I bought. One of them, let me shut that off. One of them uh, contains nicotine. And I don't like to experiment with nicotine because nobody really needs to have that unless they're, they're looking for it. And, that was not my choice. So I used this one for, for some experiments, but then I found a vendor on eBay that would sell uh, zero milligrams of nicotine in the juice. So this is unflavored um, juice with no nicotine. Then I discovered, uh, after a little bit of research on the internet, I found that the base for all of the juice, the smoke liquid, is glycerin, vegetable glycerin. This is 99.9% uh, pure vegetable glycerin and the nice thing about this is it costs about the same as this and I don't want to say it's a lifetime supply but it's pretty darn close and you could probably thin it with a little bit of water if you wanted to but I haven't found that that's necessary and the last thing that I'd like to talk about is power supplies now if you're running it from batteries it's no big deal 3.7 volt from a lithium battery is fine if you want to plug it into the wall you're going to need some sort of device to, uh, to change the voltage. Let's say you're running it for 9 or 12 volts, something like that. What I like to use are these little uh, buck converters. They take uh, 8, 10, 12, 15, 20 volts in, and you've got adjustable uh, voltage output that allows you to select, in this case, 3.7 volts as the output, and connect that directly up to your smoke generator, and it works very well for that and for the motor. 
Uh, there's additional information on my webpage, trainelectronics.com. Just search for smoke or e-cigarette, you'll find it there. And if you have any questions, feel free to give me a, uh, an email. Drop me an email at dave at davebodner.com. Thank you.